Hey, welcome to Passion City Church. My name is Dan Watson. I'm one of the pastors here and I wanna welcome you to our online Sabbath gathering. As you can see, the room is empty, but we know that the church is very much alive and it is not dictated on the four walls of a building, but we are the church. Like I said, we're on our Sabbath break, which means we are simply as a house taking time to rest and remember the goodness of God. Pastors Louis and Shelley are gonna be joining us in a moment and they're gonna be talking a little bit more about that. What does it mean to take Sabbath? But first, we're gonna enter into a time of worship together and it doesn't matter where you are. You could be at home, you could be driving somewhere, you could be on vacation. We know that God still wants to meet you exactly where you are. He's a God that loves you, who cares for you and I believe that He can move in your life right now. So Christian and a team are gonna lead us in some worship. Jesus, our eyes are on you, the one true King, on your throne today, ruling and reigning over it all. We trust you. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up, Till I lay my head Yes, I will sing Of the goodness of God In all my life you have been faithful In all my life you have been so, so the goodness of God. I love your voice. Yeah, you have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you are close like no other. And I've known you as a father, and I've known you as a friend. Yes, I have goodness of God. That's right. In all my life you have been faithful. Yes, yeah. All my life you have been so, so Stop running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me With my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything Your goodness is running after step of the way all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able Lord I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God yes I will I will sing of the goodness my God yeah Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God.
Yeah, you've been so good to me Yeah, you've always been good Yeah, you've always been faithful Yeah, you've always been kind Yeah Looking back, I can see all the times that you held me in my sorrow Looking back, I can see all the times that you led me And I didn't know which way to go Looking back, I can see all the times that you loved me In my sorrow Looking back, I can see all the ways that you led me But I didn't know which way to go Yeah, that's who you'll always be Yeah, that's who you've always been who you'll always be it's who you'll always be Lord I lift my eyes up to the hills where does my help come from it comes from you alone you alone you're the king on the throne you're God over all Lord of Lord you are so I trust you now and I'm breathing in for your faithfulness yeah I do Every step of the way, all my life you've been faithful, Lord. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so. I've witnessed your faithfulness And I've seen you breathe life with it So I'll pour out my praise again You're worthy, God, you're worthy of all of it Your promises never fail I've got stories I live to tell So I'll pour out my praise again you're worthy, God, you're worthy of all of it. I've witnessed your faithfulness, and I've seen you breathe life with it. So I'll pour out my praise again. You're worthy, God, you're worthy of all. Your promises never fail. I've got stories I live to tell, so I'll pour out my praise. Stories 
singing that just about your faithfulness and your goodness and your love and your healing power all of these memories are flooding back into my mind and I know just flooding back into all of our minds now just stories of your faithfulness and your goodness to us and for all of it we give you praise we give you our worship today our songs in our lives. And we just lay it before you again and just say, you are king and you are God. And we love you and we trust you. Amen. Thank you guys so much for leading. Well, what a beautiful confession. We've been singing that over our house and over our movement since Passion 2023 last year. And I just love the power of that line. I've witnessed your faithfulness and I'm confident that I'll see it again and again. And I'm just thinking as they're leading us in that song about what God has led us through in the months leading up to this Sabbath break, thinking back to Sabbath last year. But even if you just dial back to the beginning of this year, And thinking from Passion Fort Worth, Passion Atlanta, and then all that God has led us on as a journey as a church and the gatherings that we've been able to host and the things that we've been able to be a part of, we have seen God's faithfulness again and again. And that's just as a movement, not us individually, us as a family, you and your family. Praise God for his faithfulness. And as we're heading into this Sabbath season together, I just pray that the seed that is planted in our hearts today is that next line. I'm confident that I will see it again and again. If you're new to the Passion Story or new to Passion City Church, we do something that really doesn't make sense really to the human mind. And that is that we lean hard into Sabbath break every single year. We do that at the end of the summer season, heading into the fall, because we normally have a big mountain to climb at the end of the year called Passion Conference. And we love to stop, to rest, and to remember the faithfulness of God. And the way that we're doing that practically, already you're figuring that out because either you've joined us online or you're a part of our uh, real community in D.C. or Atlanta and you're like, hey, we're not gathering on this particular Sunday or next Sunday. The way that we put this together is that we are not meeting in person for two consecutive Sundays so that our entire house can just pause. And remember that it is God who is building our house. We're going to come back to that at the very end of our time together. So we can just take a deep breath and realize that, yes, we have a role to play. But everything God's wanting to do in D.C. and Atlanta and our cities and in the world and in our lives, it's not all up to us. It's us doing our part. But the, the, the work that needs to be accomplished, that's all up to the Spirit of God. And I love that we see that in the very opening of our story. This is Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. So we're one chapter into the story of God as it's been revealed to us in His Word. And it says, Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. And all that happened because of God, by the way. Mm -hmm. We showed up in the story on the sixth day of the seven days of creation, and now we're to the seventh day. And it says, by the seventh day, God had finished the work that he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Think about that. This is the very beginning of the story. And God is giving us this picture that he wants to pause. He wants to stop. He wants to remember all that he has done. 
And where are we in the story? We showed up on day six. So we're miraculously created in the image of God, brought to life and animated by the very breath of God. And here we are alive with God on the earth that God has created. And what happens on day one? Today we're going to rest. And I'm sure Adam and Eve might have been thinking, uh, we just got here. We haven't done anything we yet. Tired. We, we're not even <laughs> tired yet. This is yeah. our first day at being alive. We're ready to, to live. We're ready to do something. We're ready to, ready to, you know, to name animals or steward creation. And God said, oh, no, welcome to my world on day one. We're all going to rest. So we're going to stop and remember that it is I who have created everything that you see and who has created you. You haven't done a thing yet in the story. Now, I've got things for you to do. I have a role for you to play. I'm going to write you into the story of God. Some of the days are going to be amazing. Some of the days are going to be hard. Some of them are going to be uphill. Some of them are going to be downhill. Some of them you're going to feel like you can run through a wall. And some of them you are going to feel like you ran into a wall. But remember this. I'm the one who created it all. I'm the one who's responsible for it all. And I'm the one who is with you in it all. And so it's not our first day on earth. But on these days on earth, we want to do what God invited us to do on day one. And that is to remember that this day, this Sabbath day, this Sabbath heart and season, it's holy. Yeah. Why is it holy? Because it's in this moment that we remember what God has done. We pause and we look up. We stand in awe of the greatness of God, of the power of God, of the wisdom of God of the faithfulness of God in our lives. And so that's what we're doing, not just individually, not just you and your family, but this is what we're doing as a house. We're just pausing to say, God, all of this has come from you. I love that so much. You've got me so fired up just listening again to the reasons that we take Sabbath break. And I think it, for us, you know, we've, we've benefited from this practice. And so we've benefited personally from taking a break. And I know a lot of you in your families do the same thing. Uh, but we've benefited from, from a break at our house as well. And I think this house is stronger because we've practiced what yeah. God believes in. And I think as I look back over the years of the way God has been faithful to us, I think some of his faithfulness can be seen through the practice of Sabbath rest. And it's beautiful to watch it because what it does for us as a team, what it does for our door holders and people who really serve this house week in, week out, is it takes it from a place of this thing is really dependent on me. I'm about to show up, and when I show up and take my post, whatever that post might be, then God is going to be able to kind of pull this thing together this week. And I think instead the truth is, and this is what you just said so beautifully, he's going to do what he's going to do with or without us. Now, he invites us and loves us being a part of what he's doing, but he is plenty able in and of himself to do what he wants to do in the hearts of people and in the hearts of this house. And so what he does for us when we take a break is just remind us that it's him doing it. And it just frees us, doesn't it? It just frees us from feeling like it is all dependent on me. And I love that God puts the pressure where the pressure can be withstood. He knows that you and I are actually made of dust. Wow. He made us. So he's very familiar with our limitations and our structure. Mm. And he knows that for us in that limitation and structure that we need rest. And he created us with that need and he knows that it's beneficial for us to have. And he knows that we will work and thrive best in environments where the practice is kept. And so it just reminded me, I looked back in Proverbs earlier today and there's a verse in Proverbs 19, 23, and I love the Proverbs because they're full of so much wisdom. I mean, literally you can drop down pretty much in any place in the Proverbs today and you can find mm -hmm. something that is applicable to life right now. And Proverbs are written a long time ago and you would think, well, it doesn't really have that much to do with today, but it is so right on. In this proverb, in Proverbs 19, 23, it says, the fear of the Lord leads to life. 
Then one rest content, untouched by trouble. Wow. And I love that verse because it's not really saying that trouble won't touch us as, as much as it's saying that trouble won't overwhelm us. If we have the fear of the Lord in view, if we can see God, truly see God, not see him as we have kind of made him to be, but actually see him as wow. he really is. And sometimes stepping out a little bit can give us a much better perspective of who we're looking at. And when I step away for rest, I see God as he truly is, not as the God I need to show up every day and help me through, but as the God who created it all, made me in it, and has designed and purposed me to live in the world that he's made. And when I see that, I become content inside. I feel like I have a place, it's a designed place, but it's not the place of ultimate authority. I have a place in God's story and he is the ultimate authority. Wow. And that makes me content. I'm okay then. I feel like, wow, I don't have to stay up at night worried about everything because I have contentment knowing he's in charge and I'm not in charge. And then that contentment leads to true rest, which then says to trouble, which is all coming our way, right? Everybody knows trouble's coming. If you're not in it today, you've just come out of it. If you're not in it today, you'll see it tomorrow. It's trouble is everywhere. It surrounds us. But to be unaffected by trouble, to be in a world content enough to know that God is sovereign enough to hold us wow. through the trouble, boy, that's truly something of value. So it's not just, hey, you should rest because God made it that way and you should do what God says. It's also seeing the benefit for you, for your family, for you actually taking hold of that contentment for your own life. And then you practicing that because you get such a huge benefit from it. And our house benefits every day from that contentment of knowing we are God's church. He is building his people and we are his people, but we are not responsible. He is responsible for that. And we get to be a part of it to his glory. Wow, that is so powerful. It makes me, it makes me think of uh, this, this text and a text that we've heard a lot, but a text that is really so applicable for this moment. It's one of the songs of ascent. Wow. It's one of the songs that the people of God would be singing during the festivals when they would be coming into Jerusalem and going up to the temple to worship. It's a short little Psalm, Psalm 127, but this opening line, you probably know this line. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, right, they labor in vain who build it. And that's that idea of having that peace and confidence that God is the one who is building our lives, building our family and building this house. I know for Shelly and me, we do a weekly Sabbath break. I know a lot of people have a weekend and that's great. We don't really have a weekend necessarily. I work on the weekends. I meet people all the time and they're like, I'd love to come to church. I'd love to be there, but I work on the weekend. And I'm like, me too. Uh, but I work at church on the weekend, so it's a little bit different. But Saturday is the day off for us, technically. But if you're a preacher out there watching right now, you're like, yeah, no, Saturday is not a day off. Saturday is the day of days. It is the day when that message is, is, is sitting heavy on your heart, when almost every free thought you have is about serving the people of God and building the house of God. So on Monday, Monday for us is Sabbath, and I don't call it my day off, I call it my Sabbath, because calling it a Sabbath is, is a different mindset right. than calling it a day off. And it is a day off. I try to do the things I enjoy doing. I try to do the things that bring me life. We try to go and uh, have lunch together and get in spaces and places that uh, bring joy to us and take our mind off the work of building the house of God. Um, but it's most people's first day of the week. So I get to live that Genesis 2, 1 and 2 every single week because things are firing up. Meetings are happening. It's a valuation from Sunday. But for me, it's like, I'm sorry, not until sundown. And sundown comes and my mind shifts and I start making uh, notes about what I want to do this week, the way I want to lead my meetings this week. And uh, go to bed on Monday night with a little bit of a game plan for what's going to happen on Tuesday. But just simply saying... Monday is Sabbath, it changes it. And that's why I wanna encourage you in this break that we have, not just to call it a break. Hey, our church is on a break. No, our church isn't on a break. 
Uh, our church has time off these next couple of Sundays. Nope, uh, we're not taking time off the next two Sundays. We're taking Sabbath. Yeah. And in Sabbath and even saying the word Sabbath, you're saying what Shelley is saying. We are remembering who God is. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't do that, we are going to frantically move from trouble to trouble. Yeah. This is what we do in life. Or we're going to try to forget about our troubles and frantically move from joy to joy or from good meal to vacation to going to buy something to going to Amazon again to uh, going to go, you know, play pickleball. I'm just going to kind of keep things moving so I don't have to worry about the trouble. And when we pause and just take a deep breath, here's what happens. God moves in. Yeah. God moves into that space. When it's called Sabbath and not just time off, God moves into that space. And when he moves into that space, he reminds us. He reminds us of who he is. Yeah. And this psalm goes on to say, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. In vain you rise up early, and in vain you stay up late, toiling for food to eat. Mm -hmm. But God gives to his beloved in their sleep. So Some translations say he gives sleep to his beloved. Either one I'll take, because... If you rise up early and you stay up late and you're toiling to make the ends meet or toiling to solve the problems or manage the situation or, or avert the, the trouble, you're not sleeping. No, you, you went to sleep at some point, but you didn't stay asleep because you were rising up early and staying up late. And you were the one who was in the mindset of, I got to figure out how to make all this work. And he says, you know what? Um, if you will take Sabbath as an attitude of the heart, I will give you sleep. Meaning you can go to bed at night knowing that God is going to work. In those first seven days of creation, every one of them, it said, and it was evening and it was morning, first day. All the days started at night and continued until sundown the next day. So it wasn't us waking up to start a day. In the day beginning, when we joined it, it was us waking up to realize God's already been going yes. while we've been asleep. And God has already been at work before we even woke up. So we don't wake up to start work with God. We wake up to see what God has done. Yes. That is the mentality of Sabbath. And that's the beauty of knowing, God, you got to build this house. Because if you don't build it, whatever we're doing is in vain. God, you have to be the one watching over my children, watching over my family, watching over my business, watching over my city, watching over our neighborhood. Because if you're not watching over it, it doesn't matter if we stay up all night long and stay on the walls. We need God Almighty watching over us. That's how you get sleep. And that's how you know that even while you're asleep, that God provides for you. I want to encourage you to do a few things in the Sabbath break. A, I want to encourage you to call it Sabbath. Our family's on Sabbath. We have the luxury, praise God, Lord willing, of physically being away during Sabbath. Uh, you probably have kids that are going to school right now or some meetings at work and your boss didn't say, hey, I heard Passion City Church is taking Sabbath this year. So just chill, you know, spend time with the family. No, you got to show up. You got to get on a plane. You got to go somewhere. You got to have a meeting. You got to teach your classroom. You got to get your kids ready for school. There's stuff going on, but you can still call it Sabbath. That's right. And you can say, even in this week, we're adopting the attitude of Sabbath. The second thing I want to encourage you to do is to turn down the volume. Wh whatever that means for you this week. If there's anything you can turn down, just turn that down. Uh, you know what? We're, we're not going to chill on uh, two more next Netflix series this week. We're just going to turn that volume down this week. Uh, I'm not going to be in my normal six podcast rhythm this week. I'm just going to turn the volume down on that. We were going to go and see that whatever, whatever movie that came out, but we're just going to turn the volume down on that. We're just going to make space in our week. And we're going to ask God ahead of time, God, fill that space with a reminder of you. The third thing I want to encourage you to do is to get in God's word and get with God. Create that regularity where you're like, God, I'm going to open your word. I'm going to make time to hear your voice. I'm going to be available to you to speak to me in my life. 
Maybe, maybe get a brand new little journal for this week, just a little small one, and say for the next few days, I'm just going to have this with me at all time so that when God puts a thought on my heart, I can just record it. But the fourth thing I want to encourage you to do is to do something spontaneous. You know, God doesn't only meet us in our quiet time. Plan a bike ride, but only plan it with God. Don't take your AirPods. Uh, don't take, uh, don't plan on doing a phone call. Just say, God, let's me and you go on the bike ride. God, let's me, me and you go sit by the river. I'm going to plan a little short hike, but I just like it to be me and you. And I want to create a sp spontaneous activity with God that is free headspace and free heart space for God to speak to me, to encounter me, to be with me, and to invite me to be with Him in that moment. And then lastly, I want to encourage you to invite your whole family or your immediate circle, if you're single, into Sabbath. Let them know, hey, Sabbath week for me. Uh, want to join me uh, in thinking about God? Want to join me in reading in some scripture together? Kids, I want to invite you into Sabbath, and this is how we're going to do this as a family. I think just those five simple steps that you will come out of this Sabbath break with some kind of tangible mark that you can read it, underline it, highlight it, circle it, and put it on the mirror for the next few months ahead and say, you know what, God really spoke to me during Sabbath. And I believe this is gonna carry me into the season ahead. Stop, rest, and remember what God has done. We have so much to praise Him for. Yes, we do. It's just been such a phenomenal year. It hasn't all been easy, but God has been faithful through it all. And we know that he's going to be faithful in the future as well. So join us as we take this break together next Sunday. It'll be another little encouragement online. All this recorded ahead of time, of course, because we're on Sabbath break. Our team is on Sabbath break. Our door holders are on Sabbath break. But we just wanted to pop in just with an encouragement and a reminder for you. And we come back together, we are going to see God do the impossible. When we come back together, we're going to believe God to do the extraordinary yes. and to do the supernatural in our midst, in our neighborhoods, in our cities, in our lives, in our world. God is going to come through. We love you guys. So grateful. Let's worship together as we close out today. And let's remember that the same God who invited Adam and Eve into the very first day's Sabbath rest is the very same God who is watching over your life, attentive to your prayer, committed to your purpose, and who is with you right now in it all.
So God, we declare that we need you, that we can't do this without you, Jesus. And Lord God, we don't wanna labor in vain. And so just help us in this Sabbath break, God, to really rest and remember the goodness and the greatness of who you are. God, I pray for every single person watching right now that you would move in mighty ways in everybody's life. Lord God, that we would come back from this Sabbath break, God, just feeling refreshed and ready to step into all that you've got for us as a house. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, hey, listen, thank you so much for joining us on our online Sabbath gathering. Gonna be praying for you this week, man, that you really experience the rest and remembering God's goodness in your life. As we continue this Sabbath break, why don't you join us next Sunday online again and our DC team are gonna be leading the way. Have a great week. God bless.